you mentioned safeties a little bit yesterday, but can you kind of take us inside that group just with the changes and the guys kind of filling in those holes from the seniors that left last year? Yeah, the safety position you're saying? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think the biggest thing is, is number one, DeMonte Ruth. You know, I, I, I've said this about DeMonte. I don't know if there's anybody from the day that I've gotten here until now that's made a greater change in terms of character to who he is to where he stands for than DeMonte has. You know, he was probably you know, in, um, in the doghouse for a while and has kind of risen. And, you know, it, it, you talk about playing really positive football last year for us to now becoming one of those counted on seniors and in our secondary and a guy that was really product, productive a year ago for us. And then Greg Eisworth, I think his maturity, getting a guy like that coming in, here's a guy that's been there, done that, had a tough experience and bounce back from it. And, you know, I think he's been, you know, probably one of the biggest highlights coming out of spring practice is, is his leadership and his mentality. He's a guy that played quarterback. So you kind of love that, that you know, kind of that brains and, and leading the back end of the secondary. And then Lawrence White, you know, I think those, when you talk secondary-wise and safety-wise, you got to start there with those three. And then you got Braxton Lewis, who's been a really good player and a productive player for us. And then some young guys, Keontae Jones, and, you know, all of a sudden now J.D. Morton, the young true freshman. There's, there's a lot of names back there, but until the lights come on, too, with that group, it's great to say those names. I would say the only guy that's really proven, you know, at least in game action, is DeMonte, that he's ready to play. But uh, we feel really confident that that group can be really good. It's kind of the origin story of the win in the dark thing. Is Honestly, and, and wherever I read it or, or saw it, I, I don't know, but it, I, that was my message in the, literally in the, you know, in the locker room after that bowl game, knowing that win or lose, expectations were going to, to rise in our football program. And that's what we set out to do a year ago. But also knowing that the downfall for us can be all of a sudden we think we're something we're not or we think we're better than what we really are. And if you look at those games, there's a lot of close football games. And to be honest with you, that's how it's going to live at Iowa State. That's how it's going to be. And we have to understand what allowed us to win some of those games and what, a, what really allowed us to fail in some of those games, learn from it, and then become the best version of us. And so, you know, it was great to hit on that in an emotional moment after that game. And then it was also great to re reaffirm that when those kids came back and you know they've taken to it and I appreciate it you know because I, I really feel like that was our only chance to, if we want to have the ability to take another positive step in our football program. What do they allow you to do the, the guys you've been able to bring into the program and the, the way they've been able to kind of change your bodies to, for the whole offense I guess how does it change what you guys can do? You know I, I think for me it's, it's really interesting in terms of you've got such a unique skill set. Chase Allen looks like a total different football player today than Honestly, even last year, 235 pounds as a start of fall camp last year is almost 252 pounds right now. I told Chase, you've got muscles. Like, you actually look like a guy that's got muscles now. That's, that's cool for us. Dylan Sainer's a big, strong, physical guy. And, you know, Charlie Kolar, even a young guy, another year in our program, is well over 250 pounds. To me, having tight ends that have, A, a skill set they can flex out and play, yet they're also big enough and strong enough that they can be attached or be Fs or Ys for us, I think that's really big. It gives us flexibility. It gives us different ways to attack defenses, both from a spread alignment or tight alignment. And those are things we haven't had the ability to do, quite honestly, for the last two years. And, you know, I think if you look at our history, that's kind of been our niche. We've been able to have some of those guys. And, you know, again, it's just like the old line. You can't just make those guys be 250 pounds, 260 pounds. They have to develop and grow. And um, we certainly feel like we've got some guys that are getting ready to really take a good step forward for us. I hate to be the guy, but ask about kickers. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what's going on there? I, I think it's a big battle. You know, I, I think it's one of those battles for us where you've got, you know, Chris Francis, who has really, I think if you, you really study it, comes back as one of the best, really the best kickoff guys in our conference. His success rate of touchback ratio is as good as anybody in the Big 12. And with that, you know he's got a really powerful leg. What we challenge Chris is if you want to be the place kicker on top of that, then it's consistency to be able to win that job. He had a really good spring for us, um, and he should. He's a veteran and a senior going into it. Braden Arverson, on the other hand, really talented young guy, and he's a freshman. And so what was really positive for him is to get those, that spring ball and get some really good days and really tough days and work through it. And now it will be the same thing. I think that competition will be hot and heavy every day. Um, two guys that we really feel like have a lot of, a lot of um, 
a lot of upside and a lot of potential, but two guys that have to prove it. And, you know, I think that's one area where there's nobody that's a proven commodity. Until they get out there, until they do and they prove they can consistently do it, it's really hard to name a starter at that spot right now. And is punter, I mean, it's done? Punter is, is probably a little bit different because you're talking about a guy that did it in at least co a collegiate setting. You know, Corey's a, a little bit older, a little bit wider. He had a really good spring. Um, you know, I think it's systematically for us, he gives us a lot of position flexibility. We feel like he's a guy that's a really high-end talent for us. Um, and not to say anything negative about those those kickers, I think that's just a different ball game where you have um, it's a lot more team aspect of it when you got a punt team and ten other guys that can help you be successful. So, um, you know, I think right now I'd say Corey's our number one guy. We really feel confident about Corey. What's what it like to? I don't know other schools or situations, but do you address anything like that with your guys? Because I'm sure they get the same text messages and questions sure. that you were. Yeah, and you know, it's I, I said this a year ago. You know, we got a really open door policy with our kids. You know, I constantly talk about noise and things outside of our. Cause those are things we can't control. And you know, I, I think to be naive not to address situations that, that come up in every walk of life with our football team and yeah, I think you know that's something that I've always done and we always will continue to do. Don't read anything into the offensive line today I mean should we or does that move around do you move that around daily? No I, I think that's one position Chris that you're going to see move around for about the next six days until we can really get a beat on where those guys are. Um, I think we, we feel really confident in maybe what they can do, who works well with each other, who can be the most consistent there's, there's pretty much, you know, uh, you know, I think spot-wise, you're talking about three guys we feel really comfortable with, you know, Meeker, Good Jones, and Kniffel. You know, who else is ready to step up and be that consistent starter there in that bulk rep guy? And, you know, Sean Foster's a guy that's played a lot for us, obviously. Newell's done a really good job. Mueller's been a, probably one of the big surprises coming out of the spring. And then some of those young guys getting Jeff Noje back, you know, Trevor Downing. There's some really positive things going on there, but to find that right mix, I, I think it's really unfair. To, yeah. We're going to move it and shake it probably here for the next six days. How are you using this uh, fall period to evaluate play calling and offensive coordinator? Yeah, you know, I don't think it really changes for us. You know, I think we had the spring to work through some of that. And, you know, again, this fall, having the opportunity in some of these scrimmages, we will. But, you know, really, our really our operation is, has kind of stayed pretty much on track. And the neat thing is, is I think, you know, with some of those guys to be able to have some more attention on certain areas, like Jeff with the O-line, without having to worry about calling plays. I think it's been really fun to watch him, his growth and that line's growth around him. You know, certainly Joel taking over at the quarter back spot I think has been really good for him as well but uh, you know those guys and you know, we talked about it. Coach Gordon and Coach Gasser are taking great leadership roles in what we've got going on on the offensive side and certainly being right in the middle of it as well.